What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it is Codexual and today we are going to be in a command prompt here and we're going to be talking about the networking tools and I feel like this is important uh, because it's not really uh, discussed about of what tools can do what inside command prompt with the networking uh, tools. So. Um, without further ado, if you guys can do me one big happy favor is to hit the big red button that subs uh, subscribe, hit the post notifications, uh, turn them on. Every time that I do upload a video, you'll be notified. I do live stream um, not only on this platform, but on other platforms. Links are in the description, along with any other resources that I will be using in this video. All right. Now that's all of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about the commands here. The most famous uh, command is ping. So ping is basically, it tells us if the host is alive or if it's not, or um, so you can type in ping.com or excuse me, ping.google.com, and it tells me, hey, you know, Google is up and running. You can also ping in an IP address um, of the destination or of your friend to make sure, hey, you know, is his internet still alive and working? And if it's not, it'll say um, unreached of something of those words. So, um, it says reply from, and this is the IP address that it pulled from Google, and it shows how many bytes um, it was uh, um, sent of data or retrieved of data, and the time, so the milliseconds, the latency, and it does it four times. So it'll ping it four times to make sure that the host is alive, and it'll say a packet sent. Um, so if it's been sent four times and received four times, um, that's good. If there's been sent uh three times and that's not really good because there was that one time it actually did not send that packet so if it was um if it says 100 percent loss then that again that means the host is offline or it's not able to receive a connection of some sort uh what you can also do is ping has also more functions and give you a little uh, display here so it'll say ping uh, specified the host until stopped so what we could do is type in ping google.com slash t and it'll constantly ping the host make sure that the host is always up and online until it shows otherwise so let's go ahead and stop that. So pretty interesting stuff um, with more functionality to ping. The next thing that I want to discuss about, oh, let's move, let's clear this off here. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, Tracer T, um, which stands for Tracer Route. It's like ping, it sends out data packets um, as a way to troubleshoot any network issues that you may have, but instead it tracks uh, the route of the packet as it hops from one server to another. So let's go ahead and um, move this out of the way. And I've already done so because we're on a VPN. And when I did a Tracer T, it just took forever to send out that information. So when you type in Tracer T, then the host, um, such as the domain name or the IP address, it will start from your computer, then your gateway slash router, then it'll move on from another node to another node to another node. So basically it's hopping from one node um, to another node. So right here, it shows request timed out, meaning there's something wrong with this server that's not networking correctly or something that was misconfigured. And then it moves on to the next server and hops onto the next one to the next one until it reaches the final destination. And it pings it three times. So it wants to make sure that it gets to the actual and it authenticates to the actual uh, server. So um, 78 milliseconds, 78 milliseconds, and 78 milliseconds, it does it three times. Um, per hop and just in case uh, if it gets lost or it takes um, an inordinate amount of time that it doesn't represent, represent the true latency um, is the best practice to average the three basically. So um, next thing is path ping. It's similar to tracer T um, except it's more informative, which means it takes a lot more time to execute after sending um, out packets from the given 
from you to the given destination, it analyzes the route and takes in the compute packet loss of per hop basis. So let's go ahead and do a uh, path ping, which we'll do on this terminal, and we'll come back to it. Oh, can we break out of it? There we go. Close out of it. Uh, path ping msn.com. So we're going to let it run um, to its destination. It'll take a minute for everything to go through. We'll come back to path ping and we'll bring up the command prompt here. Um, IP config. So if you type in IP config, it will display your ethernet or wireless uh, network um, IP addressing. So right here is um my ethernet which i'm going through a vpn and this is what it's giving me um the vpn's ip address so that's what it's signed to me locally on the vpn and if i were to um I'm wondering i'm wondering let's go ahead and ping um this host here since we're on a vpn let's ping that one Okay, no, they don't allow anything that's outside of that. Okay, makes sense. So, um, and also right here, it shows that my gateway right here, which is, it will go towards, this is the router right here, and your subnet mask, and what is actually what your router is identifying um, your NIC, your network interface card as. So, um, basically, IP config, uh, may just be the most used networking command on Windows. Not only it's useful for information to provide, but you can combine it uh, with a couple of switches to execute certain tasks. Um, so if that makes sense, uh, we're going to be talking about flush uh, IP config slash flush. Uh, DNS in another video. Um, basically, it will be flushing the DNS cache and can help with your internet um, when your internet is working, but a specific website or server is unable to um, be reached. So we'll uh, be talking about that in another video of how to clear out cache and whatnot. Um, the next thing I would like to talk about is let's go back to path ping. Okay. So it just stopped right then and there, but um, it should have showed more than that. It should have showed like 30 hops, uh, like how Tracer T did. That's completely fine. Um, with the path ping, it shows um, the source to here and if it's been lost or sent. Um, so again, it it's kind of like, you know, with ping, um, it shows if it's, if there was any loss within pinging each hop. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over towards um, the next command that I would like to talk about is get Mac, which it will display the entire Macs on your network. Um, actually, let's clear this off. Get Mac. And it will um, display your Mac address, your media. Um, it's trying to remember it from the top of my head me ah, i'm gonna have to google this one i'm having a brain fart mac address which it stands for <laughs> media access control wow i can't even remember something simple as that but that's what a mac stands for so um what a mac address dot or what the MAC address does, it identifies each uh, device that is connected on your computer. So these, I don't know which one is which, but one of these is a um, Ethernet network card and the other two are, are virtual ones uh, because I have VMware installed. So one of these are VMware and it's manipulating um, another Mac address and the other one's probably the private internet access, which is the VPN that I use. Um, so it identifies which, um, device is which, or which software device is which, if that makes sense. Um, 
next thing I want to do is talk about the NS lookup. So let's go ahead and clear that off. NS look up. So uh, we're going to do google.com. And NS uh, lookup stands for name server lookup. Uh, it's a utility that's packed with a lot of power, but most users don't need it at all of all that power. For regular folks like you and me, it's uh, main use is to finding the IP address uh, behind a certain domain. Um, note that a certain domain names aren't um, tied to a dedicated IP address, which that means you may get a different IP every time that you run the command. This is normal for bigger websites because they spread their workload across many machines. If you convert uh, an IP address into a domain, uh, just type into the browser and you will see where it leads. Not all IP addresses lead to a domain through um, though, and many IP addresses aren't reachable over the web. So um, next command that we're going to talk about is netstat. And this shows every single connection that comes towards your computer or inside your computer. Um, netstat is a tool for network statistics, diagnostics, and analysts. It is powerful and complex, but it can be simple enough if you ignore the advanced aspects that you don't need to know about. Assuming that you aren't manage managing a massive business or a uh, um, campus network. So this here, um, I'm just allowing, um, let's go ahead and allow this to go through. Um, by default, to show all the commands, um, all active, which right here, all active connections um, on your system, rather those connections are a, on a LAN or across the internet. An active connection doesn't mean data is being moved. It just means that a port that's open and it's ready to accept a connection. So basically right here, this means um, established means that there is some type of server that is connected towards machine, uh, my machine, or I'm connected towards another uh, machine. And right here is my favorite command. Let's go ahead and clear this out. Uh, I'll just go ahead and close out of that. Right here is my favorite type command. Um, here again, type it forward slash uh, question mark. It'll give you um, the parameters to actually see what you could use. But if you type in net stat dash B, or ah, we got to run it as administrator, which sometimes you have to, it's completely fine. So net stat dash B. It will start showing which program or which exe file um, that is being used on the network. So if you trust this program, then awesome. But it will also show you what connections are being sent, or it'll be like a sin. Um, it'll be a sin um, state, or it'll be an at, um, established state, or it could be a simple HTTP state. Um, it's really awesome. So let's go ahead and let that run through. We'll come back through it here in a second. Uh, move that up there. I just want to, I want to bring all these, um, every connection up here and I just want to show the different types of states. So next command I want to talk about is um, net sh um, stands for network shell. It's a command that lets you view and configure pretty much every network adapter on your system in more detail um, than any of the uh, presetting commands and running net sh commands um, on its own will shift the command prompt into a network shell mode. Uh, there are several types of different con uh, contexts within this shell, including one's routing for related commands, um, one for DHCP related commands, and the one for diagnostics among others, but you can also use it to run individual commands too. So if we were to, let's clear this out. If you were to type in that sh forward slash question mark, it'll give us everything of what we could do. Um, we could reset a windsock. Um, that's mainly what I use uh, NetSH to reset a windsock. If um, 
if my internet connection is not working or anything like that. So if I were to, t uh, let's see, what should we use? Uh, LAN. And it shows us more features with inside that uh, WLAN of what we could do. Um, so let's type in net sh uh, WLAN show and see what that does. Uh, oh, I typed in that wrong. So um, we can show all wireless uh, devices that uh, networks. Um, it gets a little bit like, like I said, it gets more advanced into things. And so this is your wireless uh, network and we can allow um, explicit credentials, allow you to share user credential settings, um, show whether that the auto configuration logic is enabled or disabled, uh, shows the blocked and network display settings, and so on and so forth. So if we went back to net sh, and we wanted to do something about the firewall. Um, so net sh, uh, not net sh, firewall. And what we could do is we could add, uh, delete, dump, get help for more. Um, I, sh I shouldn't say more because this would probably pop up again. Um, we can do things with inside um, with that. So what do we want to add? Available commands. Nothing much. Okay. But you're able to add certain things. Um, I don't want to get more into net sh. Um, Next thing I want to talk about is ARP. Um, ARP is not really at all to actually, no, let's, let's not talk about ARP. Let's talk about net, S, uh, net stat. Let's go back to that. Okay, so there's more connections that should pop through, but it's not. Such as if you have Discord running, it'll say discord.exe. If you have Skype running, it'll say skype.exe and so on and so forth for each program that's connected to the network. Um, and it shows you um, the address that it was sent from and sent to, um, or vice versa. And it shows you established or if it's finished. Um, so it just shows you what devices are on the network. And I just wanted to show more examples of that, but I guess not. Um, ARP is going to be the last command that we're going to be talking about. Um, ARP is not really talked about whatsoever. So um, ARP is uh, short for Address Resolution Protocol, which it will translate from IP address to MAC address or is used with the IP for mapping 32-bit uh, 30, uh, 32 IP protocol address, um, MAC ad or excuse me, IP address to a MAC address that is recognized in the local network. So once, re uh, once um, recognized the server or networking device returns a response um, and containing the required address. So if we type in ARP and it shows us what commands that we could be using. So we're gonna go, or the parameters that we could be using with ARP. And right here, it shows on our network, um, this right here is the gateway, this right here, um, these three right here are the other three devices that are up and online on the network um, and, I, and that we're talking to them since we're sharing um, information with each other. So I don't know which is which if this is my streaming computer or if this is the like my iPhone or something like that. Um, but it is talking with other devices that are on the network and so on and so forth. If you're on like, like a VPN like me, um, it shows that um, the gateway for the IP, then it shows all this other stuff. So pretty interesting stuff. That's, uh, that's going to be it for the day. Um, look more into stuff like when you type in slash question mark and it shows more information than that. Um, I'm just crunched on time because I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, but um, yeah, if you found this video informative, awesome. Thank you. This is what uh, um, people who are in the network field um, are 
who use these tools on a daily basis and you guys should check it out as well. Um, it's really helpful if you, you know, if you're a network admin and whatnot, or if you're just curious to know, um, I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. Make sure that you drop a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you guys take care. Um, and we have another channel as well. It's called Hacktual. It's more for um, pen penetration testing or cybersecurity, if you will. Uh, so check out that channel. Links in the description. And you all take care. Bye. Thank you for sticking around. Please feel free to watch my other videos. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, follow my social media. If you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon or send in a donation of any amount with PayPal. It really helps out with post-production, equipment, food in my belly, and also continue making free content for you guys. Links in the description. Y'all take care, and thank you once again.